Today we will learn and reflect on the spiritual allegories observed by St. Irenaeus in his work on heresies. St. Irenaeus was not the first church father to see Christ foreshadowed in the Old Testament by means of allegory. Christians were reading the Bible stories allegorically from the time of St. Paul in Galatians. Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and the other by a free woman. One, the child of the slave, was born according to the flesh. The other, the child of the free woman, was born through the promise. Now this is an allegory. The woman are the two covenants. One woman, in fact, is Hagar from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. But the other woman corresponds to the Jerusalem above. She is free, and she is our mother. And so what does the scripture say? Drive out the slave and her child, for the child of the slave will not share the inheritance with the child of the free woman. So then, friends, we are children not of the slave, but of the free woman. And that's from Galatians 4. In a passage in Luke, Jesus specifically exhorted us to search for him in the stories of the Old Testament. Some days after his crucifixion, Jesus appeared incognito to some of his disciples on the road to Emmaus, but they didn't immediately recognize him. Appearing as a fellow traveler, he walked with them, engaging in conversation with them, when they expressed dismay at the crucifixion of Jesus, their Lord, for they were not yet aware of his resurrection. Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? And then, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. At the end of our talk, we'll discuss the sources we use for this video, and please feel welcome to follow along in the PowerPoint scripts uh, that we uploaded to SlideShare. Please, we welcome interesting questions in the comments. Let us learn and reflect together. In his books on heresies, St. Irenaeus includes a retelling of many of the stories of the patriarchs and Moses in the Old Testament and also interprets some of the parables of the New Testament. For example, St. Irenaeus sees Jonah as a type of Christ. God called Jonah to preach to the Ninevites so they would confess their wicked ways. So Jonah boarded a boat going the opposite direction, for he did not want for the mortal enemies of the Jews to repent and escape God's wrath. The boat set sail, the winds and the waves grew angry, and the crew drew lots to reveal who was the cause of the divine wrath, and the lot fell on Jonah. So over the railings went Jonah, only to be swallowed by the whale. And Jonah sang a psalm to the Lord, and the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spewed Jonah out on the dry land. And St. Irenaeus sees Adam as prefiguring Jonah. From the beginning God permitted man to be swallowed up by the great whale, who is the author of transgression. Not that he should perish together in the depths of the sea, but that he would be saved by the plan of salvation, which was accomplished by Christ, the word of God, by the sign of Jonah. This was done that man, receiving an unhoped for salvation from God, might rise from the dead and glorify God, and repeat the words that Jonah prophesied in the belly of the whale. I cry by reason of mine affliction to the Lord of my God, and he heard me from the belly of hell. And again, the story of how the whale coughed up Jonah onto the sands of the beach is an allegory for the resurrection of the dead. After Adam and Eve had eaten of the apple, they were ashamed and hid, weaving coverings of fig leaves, a rather itchy leaf. St. Irenaeus tells us Adam adopted a dress suited for his disobedience, awed by the fear of God, and fear is the beginning of wisdom, waiting for God's coming. By his dress, he admits to himself, I, by disobedience, lost that robe of sanctity which I had from the Spirit. I do now acknowledge that I am deserving of such uncomfortable dress, which tortures the body. God, who is merciful, clothes them instead in more comfortable tunics of skins of fur. They were then driven out of paradise and the tree of life, because God pitied them and did not desire that he should continue a sinner forever, nor that his sins become immortal. God set a limit to man's sins by imposing death, so that man, ceasing at length to live to sin and dying to it, might begin to live in God. There would be life in Christ, as Paul exhorts, O oh, death, where is thy victory? O oh, death, where is thy sting? St. Irenaeus sees in the original disobedience an allegory of heresy. The church has been planted as a garden in this world, and the Spirit of God says, You may freely eat from every tree of the garden, that is, you can partake of every word of scripture of the Lord, 
but you shall not partake with any heretical discord. Warning man from harmful speculation and realizing the danger of forming opinions beyond the limits of understanding. St. Irenaeus saw many of the stories of the patriarchs as allegorical. When Rachel gave birth to Esau and Jacob, the infant Jacob grabbed the heel of Esau, and later Jacob would receive the blessing of the firstborn, though he was not the eldest brother, for Esau would sell his birthright for a bowl of porridge. The allegory was that the younger nation, the Gentiles, received Christ while the elder nation, the Jews, rejected him, saying, We have no king but Caesar. Jacob worked for the sake of the younger sister Rachel, who had the handsome eyes, so Rachel prefigured the church, for whom Christ endured patiently. St. Irenaeus sees that the whole exodus of the people out of Egypt, which took place under divine guidance, was a type and image of the exodus of the church from among the Gentiles. Also, St. Irenaeus sees the rod of Moses as a type of Christ. When Moses cast his rod upon the earth, it became flesh, and swallowed up the opposing servants that were the rods cast down by the Egyptian magicians. St. Irenaeus reminds us that the writings of Moses are the words of Christ. For Jesus exhorts us, If you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? Likewise, in the parable of the rich man and the poor man, Jesus teaches us that no one should lead a luxurious life, nor living in worldly pleasures and perpetual feastings, should be the slave of his lusts and forget God. St. Irenaeus also interpreted many stories of women in the Old Testament allegorically. Hosea was ordered by the Lord to take a wife of harlotry to illustrate to the people of Israel that they were committing great harlotry by forsaking the Lord. The woman, the church, is sanctified by her marriage to her husband, the Son of God. And also the Egyptian wife of Moses was also seen as the church taken from amongst the Gentiles. St. Irenaeus sees an allegory in the miracle involving Elisha and the axe head. And this is the account in scriptures. As the servant was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, master, it was borrowed. Then Elisha, the man of God, said, Where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. Now the allegory is that when the original word of God was lost, when the apple was eaten from a tree, but now we receive the word anew by the dispensation of a tree, the cross of Christ. St. Irenaeus sees a spiritual meaning behind the Old Testament dietary law that those animals that have a double hoof and ruminate or chew the cud are clean animals that can be eaten, but that animals lacking in one or both of these are unclean. The animals with a double hoof are steady on their feet, which is an allegory for those people who make their way by faith steadily towards the Father and the Son. And those animals who chew the cud are an allegory for those who meditate day and night upon the words of God and do good works of righteousness. Those who are unclean have neither faith in God nor do they meditate on his words. St. Irenaeus sees the miracle of Jesus calling Lazarus out of the tomb, bound with bandages on his feet and hands, as symbolic of man being bound in his sins. As Lazarus was called out of his tomb after being dead for four days, as Jesus was resurrected on the third day with his resurrection body, so we will all be raised on the last day in our resurrection bodies. And Saint Irenaeus repeats Saint Paul, observing that if Christ has not risen, our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. Saint Irenaeus interprets the temptations of Christ as an allegory of redemption and salvation. After Jesus had fasted in the desert for forty days and forty nights, Satan tempted Jesus for the first time. If you are the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread, to which Jesus replied, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone. And Saint Irenaeus teaches us that as the eating of the apple in the garden caused the corruption of man, so this corruption was healed by the Lord's fasting in this world. For his next temptation, Satan brought Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple, saying, If you are the Son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written, God shall give his angels charge over you, and they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Here Satan was concealing a falsehood under the guise of Scripture, as is done by the heretics. For the Scriptures do not mention casting down. Thus Jesus answered, It is written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And the pride of reason by Satan and the heretics was defeated by the humility shown by Christ. Being defeated, Satan tempted Jesus for the last time. Satan showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world in their glory and saying, 
All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus commanded him, Depart, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Jesus revealed who Satan was by his name, for the Hebrew word Satan means apostate. As Adam was originally disobedient, so Jesus defeated Satan through his obedience. And we found this painting of an allegory of the Old and New Testaments by the Protestant painter Hans Holbein the Younger from the early 1530s. And the images and inscriptions provide a painted sermon. The central theme is the contrast between the unforgiving Old Testament law on the left and the forgiving grace of the New Testament at the right. And man's failure to obey the commandments God gave to Moses led to sin and death, as illustrated by the skeleton. However, man is forgiven and achieves salvation through Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. Man sits between the Old Testament prophet Isaiah and St. John the Baptist, who points the way forward to Christ, the Lamb of God. And now we'll talk about the sources we use for this video. St. Irenaeus' main work against heresies, which he titled The Detection and Refutation of False Knowledge, survives in a few Latin translations. The Greek original survives in fragments, and there are surviving sections in Syrian and Armenian. And we discuss the manuscript tradition more thoroughly in our main video on St. Irenaeus. And we also have a separate video on the book reviews by the early apostolic fathers uh, that cover St. Irenaeus also and many of the other fathers. The YouTube description links to the video script and our blog. Please support our channel by sharing this video with your friends and by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons and by clicking on the Amazon links to purchase any of the books we discussed, which will earn us a small affiliate commission. And please consider becoming a patron of our channel. And please click on the links for interesting videos on other topics that will broaden your knowledge and improve your soul. Thank you.